Hi, it's Mike, and uh, welcome back to the Mystic Smokers uh, shop. And at this point, we need to install our firebox latch. Uh, the firebox latch assembly comes uh, with these parts. This is the rod that goes on the inside. Um, you don't have to cut the tie strap off that holds everything together, that holds the two washers on. So essentially, uh, our firebox latch consists of uh, the L-shaped cold roll, half inch cold roll, uh, the stainless steel spring, and then the stainless steel washer on the end with the stainless steel cotter pin. I like to use stainless steel because it, you know, obviously it doesn't rust. Of course, this will if you don't paint it, um, but the washers move around so much that uh, I found that if I don't use stainless, they rust and they just, they, they look bad. And rust is always an issue uh, with cookers, particularly on the hot side. So uh, that's those parts and then uh, probably the most important part is the post which gets welded right there uh, and that is a, uh, a one and three eighths diameter cold roll where I have uh, put it on the lathe and, and relieved that inner area there and then drilled a, um, a hole through the center of it. Now this is a half inch shaft uh, if I drilled a half inch hole, then obviously it would be too snug, particularly when we started running some heat cycles and, and you get a little bit of corrosion in there and everything else that, that comes with these things. So uh, it's a little bit larger. Uh, so it is 3364 is the actual size of the hole. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go out and buy a 3364 drill bit because you are only going to drill through the... Um, uh, quarter inch or, or three eighths plate or whatever you have uh, your door made out of there uh, and that's not going to be a problem so what we will do is uh, first decide where we want to mount this rascal some guys like to mount them up here uh, which obviously that's going to sit down in uh, and it doesn't make any difference where you put it as long as this bar can reach to uh, sit behind here and, and basically stop it. So this is the way that it usually sits, uh, sitting in this area here. So you turn uh, and that, that bar on the bottom goes through and latches behind here. Super simple design. Uh, it, it should be fairly intuitive there. So what we need to do is decide exactly where we want to put it. Some guys like to put them up top. It makes absolutely no difference at all. I've done that many times. Uh, it's just a matter of, of what you want. So personally, I like to put them in the center on the center line, and I like to move them about an inch away from my door band there. This doesn't have to be precise, but about an inch is where I like to put it. That gives me plenty of room to run a bead around the outside of this. There's plenty of, of meat in this post that's going to keep this shaft or this handle shaft straight so uh, you don't have to worry about the size of that hole you can drill it out basically as large as you want you could probably even go to 9 16 uh, but uh, what I do a lot of times if, if I am between uh, 3364 bits is uh, uh, I'll just wallow pretty good with a half inch bit and that's fine so that's the tip for that uh, I will go ahead and stick that up there, find me a Sharpie, and make sure that it's centered on my hole pretty good. Again, it's not rocket science, but we want it to look good, and I've got about an inch distance there. So, just mark around in there real good. And now I know where the center of my hole is. Uh, I'll punch that and take it into the drill press and I will drill that out. So I will be back in just a few. All right, we've got our post welded in place here and it, it turns out real nice there. The next step is to uh, put our handle in. Um, the handle is very straightforward, a couple of tips with it. Uh, like I said earlier, I like to pull about an inch off of, on this particular design, pull about an inch off of the, um, the door band material there. Uh, that's going to vary, obviously, with different size uh, doors and different configurations and, and where you happen to put it. Obviously, if you move it up here, you're going to pull it back just a little bit. 
uh, I don't like for my handle to stick out past the tank. I like to be in well inside the tank because invariably it will catch my knee uh, or shin, depending on how low your, your firebox sits. Uh, and that could be problematic. You don't want that. So uh, a consideration is make sure that you get far enough back that you're uh, not hanging out if that's something that, that uh, you worry about. Another thing that you can do is uh, that I failed to mention earlier is it doesn't matter which orientation uh, your handle ends up sitting. It can be like this, uh, because remember, this is going to be the catch, right, uh, on the other side. It's just uh, intuitive for me to have it lined up parallel with this. Uh, I've seen guys do them all, all different configurations, and um, just know that that option's out there. You don't have to be completely parallel with it. You could be opposite. You, you could be whatever you wanted because uh, as long as it swings this arm down uh, to ultimately hit a stop, yes, I know, uh, to ultimately hit a stop, you're, you're good to go. Gravity will help you on this side. Uh, gravity will not help you on that side because there's just not that much. You would have to come up from the bottom, right, on that side to lock in to your pin, and there's just not enough difference in weight there to, uh, to do that. So somewhere over here is where you need to be. Um, at least in my experience. Uh, you may be asking what this is. Uh, you don't have to make a little ramp. I like to. I'll put a picture of this uh, so you can get a close-up. You may be able to get it close enough to where you can see. Uh, basically, that's just a piece of, uh, and I don't have a piece here, just a piece of scrap flat bar, quarter inch by two flat bar that I have taken the um, sanding disc and sanded me a nice gentle ramp on. Uh, you could put like a 45 degree or, or round off. Uh, what you want is something that this, this shaft can ride over gently. I have found over the years that I like this to be as shallow as I can make it. In other words, when uh, I'm trying to get where that you can see, when this comes down, I like for it to, if my door happens not to be uh, closed exactly, you know, in other words, if I'm lazy when I'm locking it down, um, it will hit here, ride down gently, and actually close the door for me. So uh, I like that, and it's just a, a little more refined way to do it. Uh, I like having the quarter inch material back there. It will get this pin a little bit further away from that face. You don't have to do that. You can mount you just a piece of flat bar or round stock. Even the scrap of uh, this piece, I've seen a bunch of guys do that. I've done it in the past. Uh, because we will cut this off depending on how thick our door is. Some doors obviously are going to be insulated, so you'll need more of this shaft, which is why that shaft is that long. We will, on this cooker, we'll end up cutting it off about right there. You could use that piece just tacked to the inside or welded to the inside there to act as that stop uh, when it comes down to, to stop against that. Uh, and obviously, your piece would be, your piece would be welded up higher I like to come off about a quarter of an inch uh, and get it a little bit further down, and that affords me to be able to use that little ramp right there. It's just a little more refinement. Um, I had thought about uh, supplying these with the uh, door latches, but for the price I'm selling these for, I mean, th there's nothing complicated to this at all. Um, it's just a piece of flat bar stock that's, that's sanded. Uh, but it is a little bit labor intensive. It takes me about 10 or 15 minutes, probably about 10 minutes, to actually build one. Uh, you know, just weld on there and and uh, do that. And, and obviously, that would change the uh, the price of the unit. And I like to keep these as cheap as I can because this is something that if you're doing this, you can do this in your shop uh, in 10, 15 minutes and be done with it. Uh, so what we have to do now is uh, put our arm in. So we slip the arm down in the hole and then pull the spring back and make sure that it goes all the way down. I like for that spring to ride against here, uh, not up there. Uh, it, it, it could certainly go up there. It's just a little more refined, I think, uh, to go down there and keeps a little bit of pressure on things. It keeps it from bouncing around. So we have to uh, now, uh, weld our keeper washers on the back, or our keeper washer and our shim washer on the back. Uh, provided with the door latch is a stainless steel washer uh, that acts as a shim or a bushing, and then a very thick, 1 8 inch thick, mild steel washer 
which was a real pain to find a supplier for that, but I, I finally did. Uh, and I like using that uh, mild steel. Uh, I don't like using zinc because zinc is uh, toxic when you're welded and you really shouldn't be doing that without some sort of uh, uh, PPE. Um, so mild steel's uh, a, a lot better choice right there and it does weld cleaner. So you have the uh, stainless steel thin washer as a shim, goes on first, and then the keeper washer, which is the thick mild steel washer. And I like to allow about a sixteenth of an inch, and I'll change the camera position here in just a second, a sixteenth of an inch between my, about a sixteenth of an inch gap there, in other words. Uh, and that again allows for heat expansion and those sorts of things. You don't want things to bind up just because they got hot. So I like to have about a sixteenth of an inch gap right there. And uh, the little spacers that I used here work great for that. I just pick them up off the floor, tape them in place uh, there, and I'll move the camera. All right, so I've got the little stainless steel shim washer in place. You can see it there. And here is the thicker uh, retaining washer, the, the carbon steel retaining washer. And I have just temporarily taped a piece of quarter inch bar stock up here to give me a quarter of an inch standoff from our uh, faceplate frame. The door panel here is obviously the same level as the, the faceplate frame, the, the um, firebox faceplate there. So I want to uh, stand off about a quarter of an inch uh, from that face plate because remember I'm going to use this little ramp right up right up here and it's a quarter of an inch thick of course so uh, I have to allow for that one quarter inch now that gives me the right distance to weld this pin in place and it becomes apparent where we do and don't want to attack to attack this welding washer right here because if we weld it, if we tack it on top, then obviously it gets in the way of, of mounting that. So that's the order that I do that. So tack here, tack there, and even tack on the underside, but leave you a space up here that you can slide that down and get you a good weld spot. And I will make sure that my handle is running straight up and down, uh, perpendicular to the, the face there. I'll make sure that this is running perfectly parallel with it. And then I'll get it all tacked up and then finally weld it. And I'll be right back with you. So that looks pretty good. Um, we'll move on and uh, move on to putting this piece in. And uh, that's a whole lot easier to do if the, uh, the firebox has a searing door um, so that you can reach it from in here. But um, uh, most cookers do not have a searing door. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, use this example. Both of these fireboxes will not have a searing door. Uh, but I'll show you how we're going to set this in the right place and um, get it all welded in. And uh, let me set the camera up in the right position. Okay, so the next step is to get our little ramp piece in the right position. It's going to be somewhere around in here. And we want it either flush with this door face or standing back just a little bit. In other words, we don't want it to come out uh, where it could, could obviously be in the way. So the dilemma is how to hold that rascal. Uh, if this thing is either mounted to a cooker, which in a, a lot of cases it will be already, I like to get all the hardware done before uh, I start mounting the uh, firebox. It's just a little easier for me to deal with in the shop here, but a lot of guys will be um, either retrofitting a cooker out in the field, um, 
or uh, having already mounted the firebox to their uh, to their system. So the question is, how, with the door closed, do I uh, get this in the right position? Obviously, uh, I want this thing to line up somewhere right in here. So I know that it's going to be right about there. Uh, so that's where it's going to end up being. So I could put me a little mark right there and I could get pretty darn close. Um, and, and that does work. You may be off just the tiniest little bit, um, you know, and, and that may or may not bug you. I'm a little bit OCD. Uh, so I like for it to be exactly right. Now, there are various clamps that you could, uh, magnet clamps that you could attach this thing to the back. I like these. Uh, the problem with using this though is, uh, if you notice, it will not hold it way up here. You have to get down on to, the, to one of these magnets here. So it leaves this ridge area right up in here, which obviously is gonna cause us a problem. You're gonna get a false uh, indication that you're in the right position, you're going to tack it, and then you're going to be way uh, beyond uh, ask me how I know that. So uh, the thing that I have started doing, it seems a little convoluted, but it's so easy, is just put me the tiniest little tack and a tiny tack, just the tiniest tack, because we're going to want to pull it apart. Uh, by hand, and that'll do it. And now we've got uh, something that we can attach our magnet to. So the magnet will go here, and this will just slide up in here wherever we can get it. All right, so I'm a little bit off. I need to come up just a little bit because my handle is, is coming down just a smidge. So I'll slide it forward just a little this bit. And right about there looks right. Gently lower my door so I don't knock it off. And that looks pretty darn good. I like that right there. Uh, I'm gonna move over here and look at it from a different angle, make sure I'm good. Yes, that looks really, really nice. So gently pull it out of the way. Uh, put me a mark in place so that I know where to weld it. And I should do it right there. So now I know where to uh, just reach in there and, and weld it. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Just got it clamped in there. I think you can see where it's lining up with the mark. So let me weld that up, be right back. All right, so we have uh, got our, all right, give it here, come on. Lord. We've got our uh, latch in place and that works really, really nice. And I've gone ahead and uh, cleaned this up a little bit where that's, uh, that's a, a seamless appearance right there on the front. And looks real good and, and clean the front up. Um, a lot of guys ask, I say, hey, what are you doing uh, uh, with that 
uh, sanding disc on the face up there, you're going to make marks. Um, well, I'm running 100 grit, so uh, that's pretty fine, and I could take a DA with uh, about 150 and, and clean it up a little bit more, and ultimately this will get sandblasted. Uh, both of these will be sandblasted, so uh, you won't see any squirrel marks at all. It'll be perfectly smooth. So uh, that turns out to be an uh, uh, easy job putting that on. Uh, a tip that I uh, failed to mention, with um, blade style hinges, uh, particularly those with bolts so you can tighten them, that's a uh, huge feature that I really like. Uh, obviously I don't put door vents on. I am um, one of those guys that uses the uh, door uh, as a vent system. This cooker here, uh, either on a 330 gallon or a 250 gallon tank, will run about right there optimally if you uh, have the right size splits. Uh, and that's a, a whole different story. Maybe one day I'll do a, uh, a video on uh, tuning your splits, your wood splits, to match your firebox and your cooker. Uh, once you start cooking that way, you, you'll never go back. Uh, you don't need door vents and, and dampers and all of that business, at least the way that I cook uh, with super clean smoke. So, uh, a nice feature about any blade hinge is uh, you can snug these bolts up to uh, control that door, uh, control the tightness of that door however you want. So, uh, I like to have them kind of snug not quite that snug uh, during operation when it's on the cooker, but kind of snug so that when I put it in a position, it stays there. Uh, and I, whenever I'm working on them, uh, like we are now, I like to go ahead and tighten them down. That way that won't go anywhere. Um, I have had the door swing down and hit me. Um, I've had... Uh, uh, cook chamber door actually came down and hit me on top of the head one time. That was uh, not very pleasant at all. Uh, but uh, if you need to move them, you can, and it will hold itself in whatever position you want. So uh, just a nice tip about uh, those style hinges. And, and another reason that I like to put the uh, thin washers in there is that helps protect uh, the two surfaces there from galling each other up. Uh, it acts as a uh, bushing or shim there uh, and helps protect everything. So uh, our firebox door is on. We've got the hinges on. We've got uh, the latch on. And uh, the next step is to, uh, I will actually roll this over. I'll put it on the, the little firebox rotisserie and I will lean in there uh, and actually weld this plate um, on the the back side i have welded it down the face here um, of course there's a little bevel that you couldn't really see there uh, so i've welded it down the face and i've welded it from up under uh, along the back side there but i just want to put a little stitch weld on the under on the, the back side right there um, I, it's it's overkill i'm sure uh, but out of, an, out of an abundance of caution i like to put about a little half inch stitch weld uh, right there so i'll have to actually lean in to do that and to do that easier i'll put it on the little rotisserie roll it around and climb in there so uh, we're done with the firebox and we'll move on to the uh, the next step and i will see you in the next episode thanks for watching